you very much, Mrs. Gillen. It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship and also to um, move the motion in my name that this House has considered road infrastructure. Um, and I should just say from the outside, I'm conscious there are many uh, right honourable and honourable members in the room. I shall try and give way as much as I can and leave time uh, for speeches for those that will be making them. Um, Skillen, I believe it may well be somewhat fortuitous that uh, today has been the day that this debate is due to take place. According to the front page of the Times, which I'm sure, as ever, can be believed, um, today is the day the transport investment strategy for the next decade is to be announced, and this will include a £1 billion per year fund to allow local authorities to bid for bypass projects. Um, so can I be perhaps the first... Um, honourable member in this House uh, to make an oral application to the Roads <laughs> Minister uh, for bypasses for Little Common off the A259 uh, and Hurst Green off the A21. I'm sure I won't be the last applicant uh, today. And perhaps if I can just explain, both of these roads are busy single lane A roads which cause congestion and danger through two villages in East Sussex, but they have the misfortune to be managed by Highways England. And if the roads minister came and visited both roads, to which he's absolutely welcome, he would perhaps be surprised <coughs> that the, the roads are part of the Highways England portfolio. Uh, the reason is because they're deemed trunk roads off the A27 and M25, respectively. They badly need to be bypassed, but Highways England will naturally focus its resources on the motorway or dual carriageway network within its portfolio. The issue we have, Mrs Gillen, in East Sussex as my colleagues will be aware who are here today, is that we have only 11 kilometres of dual carriageway in the entire county. So my ask is that this fund is accessible uh, for local authorities to deliver bypasses, even if that bypass would come off um, a Highways England road, because it's a misfortune for the two roads I mentioned that they are Highways England controlled. It's illogical that they are, but my concern is this new £1 billion fund is only available to local authority managed roads, and that would be an obstacle for the two roads that I'm specifying. It should, I would ask the Roads Minister, be an issue of qualification of the type of road rather than which entity manages that actual road itself. So perhaps if I can just give a little more detail. Um, with respect to the A21, this is a trunk road which runs from the M25 through Kent and then through East Sussex and down to the coastal town of Hastings. Highways England is continuing the duelling from Tunbridge to Tunbridge Wells in Kent, but it thereafter turns to single file when it enters East Sussex. A bit of discrimination, I would say, uh, which benefits Kent. Um, some miles further on, it goes through the heart of the village of Hurst Green, which is in my constituency. Now, the A21 was deemed to, by the Road Safety Foundation in 2014 as the most dangerous road in the UK. So much so that one section of dual carriageway, which we do have in East Sussex, has been closed off and coned off as a single carriageway due to the dangers of speeding. A bypass for Hurst Green was in the pipeline, and indeed homes were purchased by Highways England, but it was postponed in, in the 2010 spending review, and now those homes are being resold. Last year, Highways England announced that it would introduce average speed limits onto the A21 from the end of the new works at Tunbridge Wells all the way down to Hastings. Uh, and whilst this wouldn't improve uh, or indeed remove the congestion um, or increase travel times, it would perhaps do something around the appalling safety record. I was therefore dismayed, as were the villagers, to find out last year that Highways England have decided that that will not be forthcoming and that there are better options available, uh, but none of these have been given uh, to us. And I'm afraid it just compounds the issue we have in East Sussex that Highways England just don't appear interested in our road network. Of course, I will. Thank, thank him for giving away. Um, just on the dual carriageway issue there, where it's saying that one lane's closed off because of speeding, does the Honourable Member have any of you as an average speed cameras, which the Scottish Government have installed in some roads in Scotland, which meet a bit of resistance from drivers, but it's actually been proven to make the roads safer and control speeding on these roads. I thank the Honourable Member for his point. It allows me to clarify. The project that Highways England had initially put forward was to have average speed uh, cameras all the way down, so through the village where there's a school, primary school, in the heart of the village. 
Um, and indeed, uh, the, the A21 road was modelled on a road in Scotland, and maybe the one that he is talking about, which apparently reduced uh, the traffic accident rate by 80%. Thus, we were very excited to copy the fine example from Scotland and therefore dismayed when this was, was cancelled. So I very much take his point, and I hope Highways England will uh, in addition. Um, but can I just touch on the second uh, example I have, the A259? This, again, unfortunately for us, is a Highways England managed single road. It runs along the Sussex coast uh, and indeed takes over from the A27, which itself is in bad need of duelling, as championed by uh, my honourable friend, the member for Lewis, and my right honourable friend, the member for Arundel and South Downs, and others. Um, as the A259 approaches Bexhill at a village called Little Common, it acts as a dangerous bottleneck. Now, this, again, was due to be bypassed as part of Highways England's South Coast Trunk Road, which was ultimately due to come from Devon all the way to Dover and give us a much uh, better transport system. Uh, but that was scrapped in 2001. Now, fortunately, a new link road was built by East Sussex County Council and our local enterprise partnership uh, with government funding uh, and has opened between Bexhill and Hastings. Uh, it opened last year and has delivered not just improved journey times, um, but... 50,000 square feet of land for a business park and also 2,000 new homes. So it's as much of a business road as it is uh, an, a, a, a transport system. Now, East Sussex County Council and our LEP are now building a second road off that new link road. So we're effectively now two-thirds through bypassing a town of 40,000 residents. But the last remaining section is for a bypass around the remainder of Little Common. Now, this one remaining stretch would deliver a bypass for the entirety of Bexhill and make it easier for the Sussex coastal towns to join up. I've asked my local authorities and indeed the local enterprise partnership to consider the housing infrastructure fund, the 20 billion fund announced by the Chancellor last year. Um, and I've asked if that fund could be tapped for bypasses for Hurst Green and Little Common. Um, but the issue I have is that having delivered this link road, which has the room for 2,000 houses, the local authorities rightly feel that they've already delivered the housing and don't need any further. But I will certainly be asking them to apply for the new bypass fund. But we first need clarity from the roads minister that they will be allowed uh, to apply it being managed by Highways England. Of, of course. Um, I thank him for giving way and uh, congratulate him on securing this debate. And just on the point of housing, um, would you agree with me that particular consideration needs to be given um, to key arterial routes which link major motorways such as the A5 in my constituency which connects the M69, M1 and a, uh, M42? And it's already, already under huge pressure but it's going to be even more so due to proposed housing and also the development of HS2. I certainly do agree with his point and perhaps he may agree with me that some of the points I come to talk about with respect to Highways England and perhaps some of the problems that many honourable members may have had in facing that agency. Um, at the A21 reference group, which I, I sit with with my right honourable friends, the members for Tunbridge Wells and Hastings and Rye, we asked Highways England representatives what we could do to duel the rest of the A21 all the way down to Hastings how we could commission an economic study, what boxes that study would need to tick in order to meet Highways England's programme. I'm afraid to say, in our view, the Highways England reps before us displayed a lack of dynamism and a can, no can do attitude, which, in my view, is caused by the fact that they have no competition on their strategic road network programme for building. Taking uh, honourable members back to the link road that I described, that was delivered by a small outfit called Sea Change in, conju in conjunction with county and highways, uh, sorry, county and um, our local enterprise partnership. Um, and they were able to deliver that road to time and to cost. So I would ask the roads minister if it's possible to let counties and LEPs and their agency put to, uh, tenders together to bid for Highways England programme roads. I put this proposal to the chief executive of Highways England in the Transport Select Committee that I sit on. He claimed that he was confident that they could not be beaten um, on money and certainly on value for money. So my point would be, well, let's put that to the test and allow others to tender for that work. Uh, Mrs Gillard, time doesn't allow me because I do want to get others, others in, but I want to open up the debate just to talk about, about a few more points. <coughs> Firstly, it's not just about building more roads, but making sure that the roads which we currently have uh, are moving for traffic. Um, so to that end, traffic enforcement provisions, I would like to see these moved from police 
to local authority when it comes to moving traffic offences. I would also like to see um, some form of compulsion to ensure that local authorities that still rely on the police to enforce parking on the highways actually take responsibility for that. There are only 15 remaining, and I have two of those districts in my authority, and as a result, it's a free-for-all when it comes to parking and blocking up the space. Um, and for those visually impaired, and I have some sympathy with this because I, I undertook a guide dog's test uh, with a blindfold on, um, we have to, I would say, ensure that it's an offence outside of London to park on curbs in the same way that it's an offence in London to do that. Really, we have to change that. And I'd also like to see new roads, and indeed existing roads, encourage cycling. London does a great deal for cyclists, and I'd like to see that adopted uh, throughout. But, Mrs Gillan, I now give way to allow others to make their own cases.